Our next speaker is Dr. A.J. Condra. He uh, went to med school in India and came and did his residency at, at SUNY uh, Buffalo. He did his Hemong Fellowship at Thomas Jefferson in, in Philadelphia. He has a specialized uh, interest in lung cancers and been with us for a few years. And Dr. Condra will be speaking on uh, updates on lung cancer. Now, everyone stay for the last speaker group. It's going to be something really cool. I think you're going to like it. It's going to bring some some coolness back to oncology. But Dr. Condra is going to lead us into that before this. So, Dr. Condra. Hey, uh, I would like to thank uh, Norton CME team for providing me the opportunity to speak today. Uh, I'll try to get started. So uh, objectives today, we're going to look at the updates from several recent uh, conferences, including ASCO, World Conference, Lung Cancer, ASMO, uh, which just happened last week. Uh, we're going to do a focus on uh, neoadjuvant, periadjuvant chemoimmunotherapy in resectable uh, early stage lung cancers, a review of designs of the Keynote 671 AGN trial, NeoTorch, Checkmate 816, and NADIM 2 trial. We have the Adora 2, uh, sorry, Adora study uh, overall survival update and uh, new data from uh, Alina trial uh, that studied adjuvant electinib in the ALK positive lung cancers. ISABR study and uh, the lunar study. So uh, this is a Keynote 671 uh, study design. Uh, before we get started, I just want to say like, we're already using neoadjuvant uh, chemoimmunotherapy in our clinics uh, with data from the Checkmate 816 trial. And we have been already using adjuvant immunotherapy with data from Keynote 91, IMPower uh, 10 trials. So the idea is like, how, do, how does it look if we combine both uh, neoadjuvant and adjuvant immunotherapy? Are we going to get more benefit? So we got a, several trials trying to answer that question. And Keynote uh, 671 is one of that. And uh, this is a randomized double-blinded uh, phase three trial. I can't see the, uh, had about, uh, I would say around 600 uh, patients uh, that were uh, stage two. Uh, 2B, uh, stage 2 to uh, uh, 3A, 3B uh, included in the trial. And uh, um, it's the the prime, the prime first experimental arm received uh, pembrolizumab uh, given uh, along with chemotherapy uh, for four cycles, uh, followed by surgery, followed by a year of pembrolizumab. Uh, so that's the study arm. And the control arm does not get immunotherapy. It's just new adjuvant chemotherapy followed by surgery. And the primary endpoints were uh, mainly uh, event-free survival, overall survival in this particular study. And, and the secondary endpoints were major pathological response, pathological complete response. Uh, and you're going to see very, very similar uh, you know, endpoints in all the other uh, peri-adjuvant uh, or the perioperative immunotherapy trials. And here you see the event-free survival. This is the interim analysis too, uh, which was presented just last week. And you see a very significant separation of the curves with the hazard uh, ratios in the in the point uh, sixes range, if I'm reading that right. Um, this is a survival at, uh, this is a three-year survival, uh, uh, three-year follow-up data. And uh, what you see in this slide is the uh, subgroups where you see, uh, uh, response and uh, similar uh, benefits seen across all the different subgroups. If you look to the bottom right, where you see the PDL1 uh, stratification, the benefit is more in the patients with the high PDL1 scores. And this is uh, as expected what we uh, see from our experiences. In the next uh, slide, you see the pathological complete responses uh, much higher in the uh, to the right, you're seeing the pathological complete response. To the left, you see major pathological response. And it is much superior in the study arm. Um, a major pathological response uh, uh, is defined as less than 10% uh, viable tumor cells in the uh, surgical specimen, just FI. And uh, we now have the survival data uh, at three years. And uh, what, uh, what we see is uh, almost... Uh, I'll give it up. I hope you can see the numbers there, but uh, the, the hazard ratio is 0.72. And uh, on exploratory analysis, uh, 
of uh, event-free survival by pathological complete response status. What you're seeing is uh, the pathologic, the event-free survival tracks the pathological complete response. So patients who achieve uh, complete pathological response tend to have higher event-free survival. Now, it doesn't matter if uh, the patients had chemoimmunotherapy or they just received chemotherapy. It's just a known concept that uh, PCR corresponds with the uh, you know higher event-free survival and uh, eventually overall survival. So that uh, stands good for even lung, uh, lung cancer space. And on the bottom, you see the two curves uh, where the chemoimmunotherapy does better than the uh, chemotherapy uh, only arm, uh, even uh, in the patients who have not achieved the pathological CR. And here you see the treatment-related adverse events, um, pretty uh, similar uh, safety events in the both the study and the control arms. Uh, and uh, here you see the immune-mediated adverse events specifically, and uh, you know pneumonitis uh, is one of the things we always and uh, thyroid-related problems, as we all know, and the GI problems. But other than that, no new safety signals, and this is pretty much. Uh, consistent with what we had experienced in our other immunotherapy trials. So uh, basically the summary slide here is uh, uh, Keynote 61, uh, 671 trial showed improvement in overall survival uh, by using new adjuvant uh, PEMBRO followed by uh, adjuvant PEMBRO um, in resected, uh, you know, in, in patients who are eligible for surgery. Uh, and this is specifically stage two, uh, to a uh, stage two, uh, uh, 2A, 3B patients. And uh, pathological uh, CR rate was 14% higher and uh, median event-free survival was almost 2.5 years higher uh, in the PEMBRO arm. And uh, the combination is now uh, approved by FDA. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, despite uh, the chemo arm being only cisplatin, uh, FD approval is for both carbo and cisplatin uh, doublets. So we'll quickly move on to the AGN trial, which is a very similar design, phase three randomized uh, global study, which is uh, using durvalumab, uh, very similar endpoints, but the overall survival would be the sec uh, uh, secondary endpoint in this trial. And uh, uh, just uh, some uh, patient uh, characteristics uh, uh, you see in this uh, trial, they also allowed uh, use of carboplatin, uh, which was almost like uh, three quarters of the patient and about uh, one fourth of the patient received uh, cisplatin. And uh, here we see the curve separating and uh, benefit in event-free survival, uh, uh, favoring the patients who received uh, durvalumab, uh, neoadjuvant and uh, in an adjuvant fashion. And here you see to the left, pathological complete response rates, about 13%, 14% higher in the um, treatment arm compared to the study arm. And also the uh, major pathological response is higher in the study arm. And uh, you see uh, benefits seen across all the subgroups uh, on these uh, uh, forest plots and more benefit in the PDL one higher scores. And uh, moving on to the adverse event profile, uh, uh, you know, very similar safety uh, uh, events in both the uh, study and the control arms, um, which means a very manageable side effect profile. So this is the conclusion uh, with the uh, study showing improvement in pathological CR as well as event-free survival rates. Uh, hazard ratio at 0.68 and benefits seen across all the subgroups with, and PCR rate 13% higher in the study arm. And in this trial, they allowed both carbo and uh, cisplatin based chemotherapies. We await longer follow up to assess the uh, event free survival and overall survival. Uh, moving on to the Checkmate 7070 uh, study design, this is a nivolumab trial, very similar design again. And uh, both carbo and cisplatin were allowed as a chemotherapy uh, backbone. Uh, I'll move fast uh, to in, in, in the interest of time here. And uh, here uh, you see the event-free survival favoring the patients who received uh, uh, nivolumab and uh, at 70% uh, uh, at uh, 18 
18 month mark. And here are the subgroup analysis. To the left, you see uh, this uh, event free survival based on the PDL1 expression. Uh, and you see the patients with higher PDL1 score seems to have a higher benefit, just like you saw in the other two trials. And uh, uh, the, in this particular trial, the stage three patients seem to have substantial more benefit as compared to the patients with the stage two disease. And uh, to the left, you see the pathological CR rates and uh, um, and the major pathological uh, response rate, almost 20% per, uh, percent difference in the uh, improvement in the pathological CR rates. Uh, so uh, the summary uh, is... Uh, we are seeing event-free survival improvement at a hazard ratio of uh, uh, 0.58 in the Checkmate 77 uh, trial, and uh, pathological complete response rates were 20.6% higher in the study arm, and we are seeing a trend towards improved event-free survival in patients without uh, PCR compared to the uh, control arm, no new safety signals, and we are awaiting longer follow-up to assess the overall survival This is the NeoTorch Neo study design presented in the ASCO plenary series. Uh, this is a predominant Asian population, and they investigated a new uh, antibody uh, uh, immune checkpoint called torip toripalumab, and very similar design. Again, you know, same endpoints. However, in this trial, three cycles of uh, chemoimmunotherapy were given before surgery, followed by uh, one more uh, cycle of chemoimmunotherapy in the study arm, and followed by a year of uh, toripalumab. Um, and uh, you see a very substantial improvement in the event-free survival. Uh, in this trial, the hazard uh, ratios are like in the 0. 0.4 range. Uh, however, uh, in this, this analysis is only for the stage three patients. They had a hierarchical pattern uh, where uh, they first looked at the stage three followed by stage two. So this is pretty much only the stage three patients and uh, it, the, it met its uh, primary endpoint based on this, and uh, very substantial improvement in the pathological CR rates. And to the right, you see a very similar theme where patients with high PCR tend to have uh, higher event-free survivals, and also the patients who do not achieve PCR also are doing the same uh, benefit. Um, now, I'll just go, go back to our Checkmate uh, 816 study design. Um, this is uh, the one we have already been practicing in our clinics. Uh, in this trial, uh, patients had received chemoimmunotherapy only three cycles before surgery, uh, follow, uh, followed by uh, no more immunotherapy uh, compared to the uh, you know the study uh, control arm, which receives only three cycles of chemo, followed by one more cycle of chemo after surgery, mm -hmm. and uh, this included uh, stage one, one uh, B, uh, two, and three, three uh, A, three uh, B patients. And as you know, uh, we are seeing event-free survival benefit. Uh, and this is the updated three-year analysis. And at 57% versus 43% at three years, um, higher pathological CR rates as seen. And overall survival also has a strong trend towards improvement at three-year mark. And uh, we they collected a four-gene inflammatory signature from a CD8, uh, STAT1, LAG3, and CD274 expression. And what they found is uh, the patients who have a higher baseline of four-gene uh, score uh, seem to have a higher benefit than the ones without uh, higher expression. So this is something we may be able to follow in the future uh, to gather how these, uh, which patients respond really well. So... Um, I think the summary again, long-term EFS benefit is maintained, higher PCR rates, fewer patients had recurrences, including less CNS recurrences, time to uh, distant metastasis is higher, and overall survival uh, showed a promising trend towards improvement. And uh, Nadim 2 trial, another NEVO trial had the similar uh, theme, but in this trial, three cycles were given before surgery and followed by uh, six months of uh, immunotherapy in the study arm. So sort of like in between where all the patients do not receive 12 months, but just receive six months. And again, very similar uh, results, high PCR rates. And in the last uh, World Conference, they gave an update showing uh, improvement in overall survival in this trial. So 
basically this study confirms improved uh, overall survival rate at uh, uh, 84.7% versus 63% at 24 months, uh, indicating uh, this is a very good combination. So this is a common theme we are seeing. I think I already discussed some of these. Uh, PCR and major pathological response seem to be good correlate for event-free survival and uh, overall survival for our uh, future trials. Uh, we need to we uh, we need to wait for long-term follow-up on these. Uh, uh, really quick. Uh, uh, so, excuse me. I'll I'll quickly jump on to the uh, EGFR uh, space. And we are all aware of the Adora trial, uh, where we have we are already using it based on uh, the FDA approval. Um, this is osimertinib given in uh, stage um, stage one B to three A patients who had uh, been resected and uh, had received adjuvant chemotherapy, and also the patients who have not received adjuvant uh, chemotherapy. Uh, osimertinib is given for a total of three years, and um, we now have. Uh, survival data presented at the recent ASCO. This slide shows the disease-free survival benefits. And uh, this slide shows the overall survival data, about 10% improvement noted at uh, three years. And the benefit was noted across all the stages, stage 1B, stage 2, stage 3A, uh, which, um, which kind of answers the question is, is disease-free uh, survival uh, a, a good surrogate for overall survival. And that that basically answers the question uh, we had and uh, really helps us design more studies. So uh, Alina's study was just presented at uh, ESMO last week, and this was investigating ALK positive patients. Um, and the patients had like stage two, uh, stage 1B, stage two, and stage 3A patients, and uh, re they received Alecneb, uh, twice, 600 twice a day for two years versus uh, chemotherapy, uh, platinum-based chemotherapy uh, compares uh, the control arm. And what we have seen is a substantial improvement in the disease-free survival in the study arm. And the benefit is noted across all the stages, stage one, uh, 1B and uh, two and uh, three A's. This is a this is a very good uh, result. We've been waiting on this particular uh, study for uh, quite some time, and uh, I'm expecting the they will have FDA approval and should be able to use this in in our patients in the clinics. And these are the other uh, trials we have uh, ongoing, uh, which is Nordica trial, uh, Alneo trial in Italy. These are answering uh, the question of does neoadjuvant Alecneb help patients improve uh, the disease-free survival. And the HORIZON trial is like the typical Pacific trial patient where they finish chemo radiation and we're using immunotherapy. But uh, as you know, immunotherapy is not probably the right choice for ALK and EGFR patients. So uh, this, this HORIZON 01 is going to help answer the question. Similar uh, situation with uh, EGFR uh, space, you know, we have the near uh, trial, we are waiting on the results in the LORA, which is like the Pacific uh, patient where uh, you do uh, osimertinib uh, rather than immunotherapy after finish of chemo radiation. Now, this is interesting uh, study. Uh, it's a phase two design uh, uh, called uh, immunotherapy, uh, stereotactic ablative uh, radiation, uh, therapy, uh, ISABR study. And uh, in this trial, uh, patients uh, who had stage one and stage two uh, lung cancers, also uh, recurrent lung cancer patients uh, who could not receive, who could not have surgery because they're either poor surgical candidates or various reasons. Uh, we have a lot of patients who receive SBRT in, in our clinics. Now, how do you how does it look if you add immunotherapy? So they gave four cycles of nivolumab one, one month apart, uh, and the control arm did not receive uh, uh, the immunotherapy. And you know uh, this the baseline characteristics. So most of these patients are like less than fifty percent or less than two centimeters, um, and uh, they also included patients with multiple tumors, like uh, two tumors specifically. And uh, the four-year event-free survival uh, uh, curves show significant separation. And uh, so 
basically the conclusion is four year event free survival 77% with SABR uh, plus NEVO versus 53% uh, with SABR alone with a hazard ratio of 0.38 um, uh, shows a very good uh, um, usage in, in, in this population. And we have already started using this uh, with success in our clinics. And uh, the uh, safety profile looked pretty good with no major toxicities in these patients. And uh, I'm going to skip this. Uh, skip fast through this uh, slide. Flora to design. Basically, we we use osmertinib in first line uh, setting in patients with uh, advanced uh, EGFR mutated patients. This trial is trying to compare uh, adding chemotherapy along with osmertinib, followed by maintenance uh, osmertinib and uh, pemetrexid compared with the standard of care, and we are noticing improvement in the PFS and. Uh, and uh, but at the cost of increased adverse events, as patients do get longer course of chemotherapy, so this uh, will probably uh, be a interesting option. Um, uh, with uh, provided we are also waiting for survival data. And finally, this is the last slide uh, study where um, we are bringing we are seeing a TTF fields come into the lung cancer space. We already used it, uh, this in GBM. Uh, in, in our clinics. Uh, this is an open-label phase three trial that compared uh, um, using TTF fields along with the standard of care. This is second line population who have already progressed on cisplatin doublet and uh, uh, you know TTF fields plus either immunotherapy or docetaxel compared with uh, uh, docetaxel or immunotherapy alone. And uh, the median survival has uh, endpoint has been met with 13.2 months versus uh, 8.9 months with a hazard ratio 0. 0.74. Uh, and uh, the benefit seems to be even more substantial in the patients uh, uh, in synergy with the immunotherapy. And what you see here is like, especially the PD1, uh, PDL1 score uh, greater than once derived an even more substantial benefit with hazard ratio 0. 0.49. Uh, with almost uh, 23 months versus uh, uh, around 10 months in the control. So I'll... All right, I, I do have a quick question. You probably, you, you showed a slide that said you can't answer this, but I'm going to pull your feet to the fire while we're setting up for the next. So all the new adjuvant, it seemed like there was possibly not trying to compare different studies with each other. But was there any data that made was compelling to make you think like, am I going to do Pembro with chemo before follow with maintenance? Is that the the way, or is there is is it nivolumab, or is there something else that we should be walking away with thinking like there's enough data there to to help um, change our our. So I mean, uh, nivolumab in the perioperative uh, immunotherapy setting seems to have the overall survival benefit. So that's the only trial that has benefit. So automatically we are just inclined to use that as our first choice, especially with the FDA approval. But uh, you also have to remember uh, in the NADIM-2 trial, uh, you know, uh, as well as the Checkmate uh, 816, we had seen benefit uh, with in patients who had lesser uh, duration of treatment. Like for example, uh, Checkmate 816, we had three cycles of neoadjuvant uh, immunotherapy and uh, Nadim, we had like six months uh, of just, uh, so I think there are a lot of questions need to be answered of what's the right duration of immunotherapy. Uh, is is too much good or so do we pick something in the middle? So uh, I think the long-term uh, follow-ups will answer all these questions probably four or five years from now. All right, let's uh, applause for Dr. Chandra. Thanks. Thank you. All right.